All right, welcome in to the Will Wade Show presented by FM Digital Media right here. Starting your week off, and it is tourney time, man. You can feel it now as it's starting to get towards the really cool part of basketball season, postseason action as conference tournaments are just about upon us, and then it'll be March. We all know what that means for the sport of college basketball. We always like to break it down with our guy, William Wade, the general who is here with us every week on the Will Wade Show Brought to you by FM Digital Media to break it down here weekly. Coach, salute. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing good. Um, Coach, let's start in the SEC. Huge storylines out of here. And look at Houston and Alabama staying atop the AP Top 25. Um, th- this Brandon Miller story is nuts. Alabama is is a crazy story here. Obviously, you've got some history with Alabama and a, and a rivalry that was brewing that a lot of people were looking forward to. How do you make uh, uh, of this story that, that has really kind of captured – basketball for the last week look i may i may surprise you here on this but i i'm of the belief that um you know alabama and that administration knows this situation better than anybody Mm -hmm. and they're not playing him and putting him out there if if they felt like you know, I mean, look, administrator, administrators by, by, um, you know, by nature are just risk averse people, especially when you get to athletic directors and school presidents. You may be able to find some like rogue associate AD who's a little bit more of a gambler, but most of those, I mean, almost anybody who gets to administration is a risk averse person, and so for them to to to, to stick their neck out here like that, I think there's a lot of stuff. You know that, that that maybe you know not public or not out there, or that they feel that you know they feel very comfortable with the w- with the situation. And so, um, you know, I, I mean, Brandon Miller's a phenomenal talent. He's a phenomenal player. He hadn't had any, uh, you know, n- you know, no, no other known issues. It's not like this is a trend. And and like I said, they're, they're, they're you know they they probably have a lot more of the information than we have the general public. And you've got to trust that the information that they have is, is, is sufficient and and meets their, you know, meets their, uh, uh, you know, meets, you know, meets their criteria to, to, to keep playing him, keep playing Bradley and that sort of thing. I mean, look, it's a, it's a tough situation. All these things are tough situations and everybody wants it to be cut and dry. You should do this. You should do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. Well, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to it than that. There's a lot more people involved. There's a lot more, um, uh, you know, parts to the situation. And so, you know, you've got to trust that, that, that Alabama's done their due diligence and, and, and they certainly feel comfortable and, and that's why they're, that's why they're playing him. But, you know, on a separate, separate, but related note, I mean, for him with, with, with everything going on around for him to come out and have 41 in South Carolina, that next game, that says for him to be able to lock in and focus like that, I thought he was. I thought some of his teammates were more affected up by by it than he was. Just watching that South Carolina game, then to back it up, obviously with another big time game, twenty four against Alabama. I mean against Arkansas on uh, on Saturday. So got to give him credit for being able to focus and 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 lock in to um, you know to, to 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 what they're doing, but. It's, it's a tragic situation and, and you know there's there's unfortunately there's not a lot of easy answers and, and you've got to, you've got to trust that, that Alabama's AD president board that they've that they have um, that they have uh, you know done their due diligence and and this is what they this is where they've landed and this is where they're comfortable because I mean at the end of the day the kid has rights as well you know there's there's a lot of other folks involved and so you just got to trust that that's where it's that's where it's landed and, and this is what they're doing and, and um, you know we'll see how it how, how it turns out. If it turns out that that uh, you know they've made a bad call and there's more information that they didn't know, I mean certainly you know there'll be heads that'll roll um, in, in in a couple months, I'm sure. But you know for now, you know obviously the university's comfortable, the athletic director's comfortable, the basketball program's comfortable, and so they're they're going to play him and Bradley and, and and play the season out and see how it goes. Um, they've certainly taken our place as the villain of the SEC. They right? have stepped in, so, and, and they've grabbed so the they, hat off they, the rack they, for sure. They, they had some big shoes to fill, fill, but I think they've more than I think they've more than uh, I think they've more than accomplished that. They have, uh, yeah, they have lapped you for sure. They have uh, they've taken it to another level over there. 
Uh, he had 24 Saturday and a win over Arkansas. Did you recruit him, um, or, or was he pretty much locked in the entire way? No, you know, his dad played football at Alabama for Gene Stallings yeah. uh, in the early 90s. He was from Nashville. We knew about him, obviously, but – not somebody that uh, that we we were going to waste a lot of time if we if we recruited him. So we weren't into waiting time. Contrary to what everybody thought, we can't just go get everybody. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know he was somebody that we would have ended up wasting wasting time on, and he he was pretty much uh, he was pretty much locked in with Alabama for, for for a while, and Bradley was too. They were friendly and friends and. Um, you know, they, they, they kind of, I'm not saying they were a package deal, but they, they, they were very close and, and those two were, were trending towards Bama almost, you know, from, from that spring all the way through the recruiting, recruiting season. Everybody kind of, kind of figured that's where, uh, that, that's where it was heading, but he's a, he's a tremendous player, tremendous talent. Uh, really, really, you know, just having a, a really, really good freshman year. I thought the story, you know, I, I don't know if this is what you want to segment into, but I thought the story of that Arkansas Alabama game was Arkansas. Like for them to go into Alabama and play like that, they got Nick Smith back going. This is back-to-back games. Nick Smith played well. I mean, I think Arkansas is starting. They've got they've got a big game with with with, with Kentucky and, and Tennessee here to close. Tennessee and Kentucky to close it. But but I think Arkansas is starting to hit their stride and play well, kind of like Musselman's teams do down the stretch. They got Nick Smith healthy. Uh, A. B. Anthony Black is playing uh, playing really well. Council Ricky Council's been playing great all year they're kind of getting enough production from the big guys obviously they miss brazil a ton who tours acl to make threes but they're getting enough production from that four and five spots just to be to be good enough with with, with those three guards playing devo davis is doing what he does and so you know I, I really like the trajectory of arkansas here coming down the stretch you know you never count out musclemen in tournament settings or you know as they as they they kind of always take on a little bit of water during the season, but they're able to bail it out and and uh, and, and have some smooth sailing towards the end by back-to-back Elite Eight. So I think Alabama's still playing very well, and, and they're obviously one of the best couple teams in the country. They're, they're uh, one of the few teams that has both. I think their defense is ranked fifth and their offense is 17th or something like that. So they got both their offense and defensive efficiencies in the top 20, which is, you know, kind of a uh, – Somewhere you've got to be if you're if you're going to be a Final Four level team, but I think uh, I think Arkansas is really coming on as well, and I, I think Arkansas's you know but you know outside of of, of Alabama and Tennessee and, and Kentucky's you know they're 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 kind of strutting their stuff right now. I think Arkansas is still that that upper echelon team that we thought they were at the beginning of the year, and they're starting to round into form here as, as they get healthy and as, as the season winds down. Another team that feels like that is Kansas. Kansas went through some adversity Ooh. in the middle of the year, and now it feels like they've won. Think about this now: they've won six straight Big Twelve games. Wow, six straight Big, the toughest conference maybe in the last ten or twelve years. They've won six straight games in the league. I mean, absolutely in, incredible, incredible what they've done. Jalen Wilson playing at a at a high level. Uh, the point guard Harris is really. He he started playing well and he's taken off and that's um, that that that's helped Kansas quite a bit. Um, you know, Grady Dick makes shots. They're starting to get some production from the. You know, they can play small. They've been playing small ball all year uh, with with KJ Adams inside and now they're they're getting some production from some of those big kids and they're able to play Ernest and some of those big kids uh, a little bit a uh, little bit more and so I think Kansas is. Uh, you know, I think that's another, you know, if you're looking at one seeds, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious right now, Houston, uh, Alabama, Kansas, and then you're looking at either Purdue or, or UCLA who just won the Pac-12. I think if Purdue, you know, Purdue bows out early in that Big Ten tournament. I think UCLA can maybe crack that up. I think that's what you're, what you're looking at right now for those ones. What about Marquette? Marquette's making a big jump here at the right time. Yeah, they're playing great offensively. You know, they're 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 third in the country in offensive efficiency. They spread the court. They've got a, a center who's a nightmare matchup, just in terms of uh, just in terms of he can do a lot of different things. Uh, he can play a lot of different places. He can move around. He his numbers don't jump off the page at you, but uh, Oso can do so many things. They've got great guard play. They've got a point guard who may be the player of the year. I mean, they're the odds-on favorite to win the to win the Big East. Uh, they've got two Big East games left. I think they're at uh, at Butler 
uh, which is you know no no Big East no Big East game is 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 is, is easy, but in terms of the spectrum of of uh, of tough games, that would be one of the easier road games in the league to go with Georgetown probably and DePaul, and they just beat DePaul, and then I think they've got. Um, they may have Georgetown or St. John's or somebody at home to finish it. So I think they've, they've got a pretty, pretty, pretty good road here to, to, to close this thing out. But their offense is something to watch. Their spacing is phenomenal. They're, uh, you know, they've, they've got a lot of interchangeable parts and, and they've got a really good team that's going to be a sleeper to go to the Final Four, I think. Uh, and I know that you've been high on Kelvin Sampson in Houston all season long. They're back in the top spot here going into the last couple of weeks of the uh, of the regular season how do you make of the cougars right now well sasser's playing great jerris walker's still playing at a high level you know they they, they wrapped up the american title at uh, at east carolina the other day uh they've got two more games left including a big finale at memphis on sunday which would be a big game great game two really really good teams uh, playing each other and, and houston beat memphis in houston but memphis didn't have kendrick davis who's their best player and probably you know, could be the player of the year in the American, or, or maybe it'll be Sasser or one of the guys off of, off of uh, Trayvon Mark or somebody off of Houston. But um, yeah, I think Houston's playing really well. They're, you know, you know what you're going to get. You're going to show up. It's going to be a street fight. You know, they're going to rebound. They're going to guard. Their offense has has gotten to be uh, pretty efficient. I mean, they're they're top ten in the country both in offensive and defensive efficiency. So if you look at just the metrics, they've got the best. Uh, combined metrics of, of of anybody like Marquette's like third on offense and like sixty fifth defensively. It kind of looked like a Will Wade LSU metrics <laughs> there, but uh, uh, you know. So 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 I think uh, I, th- I think Houston just in terms of metrics and Alabama in terms of metrics, Kansas even to some extent. You know they've got the profile that you're looking for to be able to advance and and win and not not slip up. You know in in, a, in, in you know over the course of five or six games in the NCAA tournament. Uh, what about Michigan? I mean, it seemed like they huge were win. dead. I mean, yeah, how about the huge. shot? I mean, huge win. And Michigan always seems to do this yep. kind of rally late. And that middle of the Big Ten, there's so many teams jump. They're bogged together at 11. I think there's like four teams at 11 and 7. You got like three teams at 10 and 8. You've got Michigan State at 9 and 8, who's going to be short a game because of a COVID uh, COVID deal. And they can't make up a game with Minnesota, which they would win because Minnesota is just awful. And then you've got like three teams at eight, three or four teams at eight and ten with Nebraska and some of those guys. So you got like Purdue at the top, you got Ohio State and Minnesota at the bottom, and then you've got all these teams in the middle, you know. And so the Big Ten's just a, 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 a you know, just just very murky and, and and muddy in the middle. And you know, I, th- I think Michigan's gonna have a chance. They're gonna have to win some games here down the stretch. They got two big games this week. They're gonna have to gonna gonna have to find a way to do it, but. Uh, Kobe Bufkin's playing really well. He's a kid we actually recruited at LSU. We really, really liked him, but we weren't going to. He was he's from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He had mm-hmm. some relatives in Louisiana. We were trying like hell to get him, uh, but we couldn't couldn't get that done. And, and, and McDaniel, the point guard from DC, is playing better. Uh, and then obviously they've got they've got the big kid inside who's phenomenal. But uh, it's going to be close for Michigan. But I, th- I think they're right there, uh, right there on that bubble, or put themselves in the conversation to have have an opportunity. We mentioned uh, Kansas making a run here. Kentucky has played well over the last couple of weeks. Winners of four straight. What do you make of the Wildcats? Well, they've gotten consistency from top and which is huge. You know, Case and Wallace, a point guard, has been great for them. Reeves is making shots. Oscar's rebounding the ball. Moving a little bit better defensively, so you know they got four really, really good players, and they can, you know, Chris Livingston's played well in a small ball five role for them a couple times, and so I just, I just think that you know they've they've hit their rhythm, they found their rhythm, they got some rhythm and chemistry going right now, and you know they're gonna they got they've got uh, Vanderbilt at home, I believe, uh, this week, and 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 so that'll be a uh, you know that that'll be a big game for them, and they can they need to to win that, and not have any not have any slip ups as they. As they move, uh, as, as they move down the stretch here, but I think they're, I think they're playing, playing really, really well. And this, you know, Cal does the same thing. He yeah. goes through some, some rough spots, and he's able to, to turn it and, and, and get it moving. We have some listener questions. A lot of listeners look forward to our podcast each week. Hunter Hall is a guy out of Birmingham who is a huge Will Wade fan, and he says uh, Will Wade is around forty years old. Obviously, he talks to a ton of people in the game. And he and he recruited Trendon Watford out of high school and was able to land him at LSU. He was wondering if he had any Bucky McMillan stories who just won a share of the SoCon yeah, conference. Yeah, 
unbelievable job at Sanford. I watched their game with Furman the other day. Unfortunately, they lost it or they'd have won it uh, outright. But uh, Bucky's a uh, – so Bucky played for Bill Armstrong at Birmingham Southern, my wow. si- who was our assistant. Uh, he, he played for, for Coach Armstrong. And, uh, yeah, I had many meetings with Bucky. I mean, he – he ran that program at Mountain Brook. I mean, they would lift. I mean, you, they would lift after 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 games, and uh, I mean, he, he just had a phenomenal uh, program. You had him in the gym all the time, early in the morning. You got to go there at six a.m. to watch him sh- watch him shoot, and uh, just ran a phenomenal program there. He's done the same thing at at Sanford. I'd never bet against against Bucky, man. He's 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 always going to find a way to win. It's it's not not necessarily conventional um, the way he does things. Um, the way he presses, the way he plays, but he's got you know he's got some really good players. He's got a kid, Quez Glover, who transferred from Florida, who's his point guard, who's a who's a, a, a tremendous player. He's got um, number twenty two. I can't think of his name. He's a really good player. Um, you know he's got some decent decent bigs. He's got a, 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 a another transfer, Parham, who's good. So I mean he's done he's done a really nice job, and he did what he does. You know he's built that community up around Sanford. The gym was packed the other night. Uh, or Saturday afternoon when they played Furman. And, you know, look, they're the two seed in the SOCON tournament. Furman's the one. I think they'll get another crack at them on a neutral court, and it's going to be a really, really good game. I mean, I think the SOCON, you've got Furman, Sanford, and then UNC Greensboro. UNC Greensboro is the three seed. They're going to be a tough out. Mike Jones, who I worked with at, at uh, VCU for a while, they're the, they're, the, they're the one team in the SOCON that actually defends. Furman's not great defensively, and, and Sanford's not great defensively. Uh, most of those teams are not great defensively, but but, uh, but Jonesy and uh, and the Spartans are very, very good defensively. So that'll give them a chance in the tournament. But uh, Bucky Ball's alive and well, man. He's done a great job. He's going to keep moving up. I mean, he's he'll be at Sanford, you know, for 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 as long as they can keep him, and then he's gonna he's gonna get some big time uh, some big time jobs. So really respect him. He was fun during the recruiting process. He'd ask you a ton of questions. Shoot, I was in there picking his brain, trying to get stuff. He's so he's so, he's so smart. He's one of the smartest coaches I've ever been around. Wow, that's a hell of a compliment. Um, you're always in the numbers. You're always looking at the analytics. It's uh, he also points out that every national champion since 2002 has been ranked top 40 in offense and uh, been top 25 in defense as far as Ken Palm was uh, was concerned. There's a lot of teams that fit that criteria. Did you set marks like that for your teams early on to be? Oh yeah. Knew, like we knew what a Final Four team looked like, average height, all that sort of stuff. You know, there's one big outlier in like the last ten years is West Virginia's Final Four run. Their stats went against like every everything. And was that beeline in them? Stuff. No, it was with Huggins. Ah, wow. They were in Indianapolis, like in it was like the last twenty years. It was the one that was a huge, huge outlier. Like they should have never like their stuff didn't fit any profile of a of a freaking sweet 16 team much less a final four team so that was like the one outlier but no you looked at the you know you looked at the makeup the stats and the average height and how much they you know we had we had a a, uh, like a 10 prong i don't have it sitting in front of me we had like a 10 stats that could basically forecast it and where you wanted to be and where you needed to be and so we would look at that and try to keep ourselves up to date on that and you know, you try to build your team around it. You can't build a perfect team every year. You miss in recruiting. You miss on some things. But you would try to build around those stats and build your team around those stats. Uh, what are you looking forward to in the conference tournaments coming up? I know that the regular season closes out, but is this how, – how do you view a conference tournament from a head coaching standpoint? Well, it depends on where you are. Shoot, there were some times you went and you wanted to leave early because you knew you, you were in the NCAA tournament. You needed to rest your team and didn't want to be there the whole time. <laughs> Um, but you know, the, 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 tournaments I'm looking forward to, you know, I'm really looking forward to the colonial tournament. Hofstra won the league. You know, everybody's given Charleston all this credit and Charleston's really good. Charleston's actually the three seed in the tournament. Hofstra won the lead and Towson and, and Charleston tied for second. And Towson's the two and Charleston's the three. I think that tournament's going to be unbelievably competitive. I think the conference USA tournament, is going to be phenomenal. Obviously, Florida Atlantic's played great. UAB is, 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 is really, really good. North Texas has won it a couple times, and Coach McCaslam's team's very good. Middle Tennessee's had some good moments. So you've got, you've got, you've got some great uh, league tournaments. The West Coast Conference tournament's going to be very good. Another Gonzaga and, and, and St. Mary's in the final. I think the West Coast does a great job. I think a lot of it, and West Coast isn't a one-bid league, but some of these one-bid leagues – 
you know, you want to send your best team to the tournament so you got a chance to pull an upset. I think they give those those top two seeds a double buy into the semifinals. And so they basically got to only win two games, Gonzaga, to win the league tournament. But they could get a double buy. Into I think that's smart. Like you want to send, you know, you want to send your best representative with the best seed possible. The Ohio Valley Conference does the same thing. I think the Southland does the same thing as well. But the OVC and Nash, uh, uh, they're having their tournament in Evansville. I think the Southland tournaments, I think it's in Louisiana, um, at, at, uh, in Lake Charles. But, but those guys, you know, the, those one bid leagues, you want to send your best representative and, and send, the, send, send, your, send your teams there. So I like those double buys for those teams. But some of the, I mean, some of these leagues, you know, look at like the Metro Atlantic Athletic where Iona is going to be the one seed. There's like eight teams that could win that league tournament. And so, you know, it's not like March Madness. It's crazy. It's a coach. You, you, you wish it wasn't. Quite as crazy, or wasn't quite like that, but 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 it certainly is uh, certainly is wild as you as, as you get going. So you like to play it down. You like to play the hype of it down. Yeah, I mean, if you get your guys too tight, we always want to be aggressive, confident, loose. I do a lot more shooting drills around this time. Try to get our shooting a little bit better. See if we may make another three or two, and that that would be the difference. But by this point, you are who you are. You're not really changing a whole lot. And, you know, you got to go in there and, and 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 just and just play. And so. Um, you know, you try not to, to, to make the moment uh, too big, so uh, so to speak. And I think that's a that's a large part of it. Just go out there and play and do what you've done all year. Yeah. Coach Will Wade, Will Wade podcast every week here on the Jordy, uh, part of FM Digital Media. Uh, and you can catch it weekly. And it's starting to get really good as we're breaking down March Madness and starting to break down how these teams all fit into this 68-team puzzle. Uh, Coach, as always, thank you. It's great to see you. Great to talk to you. I meant to report back to you, Kim Mulkey and the – the, uh, the LSU women's team uh, had their images on the cups uh, for sure. Uh, they had their, their, their schedule, and they had their seniors yesterday honored at Senior Day. And she also broke uh, a record that had been standing since 1981, an attendance record that she folded yesterday, putting 15,800 people in the, in the Maribel And Center. everybody saw their, saw their women's players on those cups, right? That's exactly right. Exactly Attention right. to detail. That's why she wins. She's yeah. an absolute monster. Now she is a winner, 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 and uh, that's why. I mean, it's incredible. They they lost one game all year, right? That's Two right. seed in the SEC tournament, and I mean, it's it, it's only going to get better from here. She's just getting started. Uh, she had Shaq and Shaq's daughter in on an unofficial this weekend. Had him sitting courtside last night and national TV. And oh, she, it was she. She don't miss a trick now. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> she, she don't miss a trick. She knows what she's doing. She's been uh, doing it a long time at a high level. She's very, very sharp. Uh, good things happening to you and your name around the sport. That's good for everybody to see. A lot of people happy and, and, and hopeful that that all works out. So we'll continue to talk to you, Coach. Good to see you. Thanks. We'll see how it all shakes out. Yes, sir. There he is. Will Wade from the Will Wade Show presented by FM Digital Media. Are you good? 